nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device and you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps so if you are on a desktop you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well you can also enable subtitles and the little cc on the screen will enable closed captioning that way if i am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. <laughs> Hello. I almost deleted something right when I clicked on it. Why did this get so bright all of a sudden? Why did this get all bright all of a sudden? How are you all? Welcome. <laughs> Let me tone it down a tiny bit. I was like, ooh, this, this, uh, it was like perfect. And I was like, okay, I'm just not going to touch it. And then um, when I go live, it changed. So, you know, how it happens. Okay. White's going to be hard. White's just as hard as black. How are you? All right. I'm going to take my shawl off right off the bat. I got so hot in here yesterday. And today is no different. It is so hot in the office. And I think it's because it's really cold outside. And so um, it, I think, makes the heater work overtime. But it was set for 73 too. It was like, what the heck? Like I get like, I'm really keyed up during streams, you know? And sometimes a little nervous, so that just makes me warmer. Hello, Shem. Hello, Malin. No worries, Elena. Thanks for lurking. Hey, Terry. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Anne. Hey, Amy. Carol. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That, that looks pretty good, don't you think? Okay, so um, I obviously decided to cut out the fabric and that's because I, when I, I was a little flustered. I was so warm yesterday, you know? Yeah, exactly, Terry. And I think I also had taller socks on. I don't know. And my rain boots. I had my rain boots on because they're like shoes. <laughs> After the stream, I was like, okay, I'm taking these off. I'm taking my boots off. They're short, but they were still like, you know, it's rubber. Hello, Rachel. Um, so, so I decided to... Go with the white. It's like funny because I think uh, Diane comment was the last comment in the live stream. She's like, you should just do white because that's what you want. She didn't say it that way, but it's true. I just want this white top, right? So I cut it in white. And um, I also decided that marking all the tucks and getting them ready was going to take so much time. I didn't want to do all that on camera. So I did a lot of it. Um, and I left one on the ironing board for you. So what I decided to do was iron down the center of the pleat. So I folded the, the tuck, right? And so now all I need to do is hold this up to the machine and sew parallel, right? And then this little iron here is my ending point. So they're all in the same spot. Um, and I'll show you a little bit on the, the marking side too, because I went a little overboard and it wasn't until I was like partway through, I was like, this is, way too much work. I'm making this way too complicated. I don't do this all the time. So, you know, it's like, I don't know, you have to kind of remember what works best. Um, you know, like one thing I decided to do also was 
I kind of ignored all the markings. I knew where the first one needed to be and I just started parallel to the center line and then went from there. And I just, I just made my fold three quarters of an inch away every time and I'll show you how I did that on the iron. So, but we can chat for a second and say hi to each other first. Hi Kira, <laughs> how's it going? So. I did the, I washed my linen and I ironed it dry with a dry iron. And it took a long time because it's not the lightest weight linen. It's not heavy, but it's, it's definitely, you know, took a while, especially because I did like six yards. <laughs> Keeping it from touching the floor was the worst. That was the hardest part. And, um, and I'm getting, ironing it dry before it dried, dried on its own. Cause I, by the time I got like halfway through, I was like, this is feeling a little bit like too dry. So I was spraying it a little bit. And the reason I did that is because, um, yeah, I think it is Terry. It's the ILO one nine. Yeah. 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 That sounds really familiar. It's next door. So I can check it and make sure in my little office next door, the big chunk. Cutting that, the way they ship that to you, it's like they, it was on a roll and then they just pulled the tube out and sent it to you. It's like the worst. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to unroll this and measure it off. You know, it's not like, it's not the accordion folding I do, right? <laughs> I'm spoiled by the way I fold things. Um, and the reason I did that, just in case everyone's wondering, is that I've heard that helps prevent wrinkles in the future. So the very first time you pre-wash your fabric, if you iron it dry, apparently this helps set something into the linen, especially linens, um, to prevent it from wrinkling very badly from here on out. So from here on out, I can just wash and dry it. Um, but I'll probably like wash and dry it and pull it right out. Well, me and Terry, well, let's tell you the tale of getting sucked into the linen rabbit hole. Um, I think it's fabrics-store.com. Let me advertise for them. They popped up somewhere and I was like, that's a pretty good deal for linen. Let me check this out. And the place is pretty legit. Yeah, it's got a lot of linen. It's very affordable. Um, it, you know, one thing I noticed, Terry, was that all the little linen pieces, these like little threads that come off in the laundry, what the ones I'm finding, like when I try and pluck them off of another thing in the laundry, there weren't that many. When I try and pluck it off, it just breaks. And so I'm a little worried about that. Like, I don't know anything about fabric construction, like in that realm, like, I, you know, a little tiny bit. <laughs> I know more than, you know, someone who doesn't sew. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, so I'm like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So Amy, once you do, they just send you the best deals. So I bought 15 yards because I want to, my grand scheme is that I want to make a linen, like, I don't even know what you'd call it, but for my bed, I want, uh, instead of having a duvet or a comforter, I just want two layers of linen to be my top thing because it's so hot here. And, um, Someone told messaged me when they heard me say that they were like, that's exactly what I sleep under and they live in Arizona and it's just as hot. And I was like, that sounds great because it will give you weight, but breathability. It can break the fibers. Yeah, Mullen. Yeah, right. But I feel like ran would be subjected to that too, since they're both like papery, you know? Hi, Heidi. How's it going? The handkerchief weight. Yeah, that sounds perfect for for lining, yeah. Yeah, be, yeah, be careful, Amy. <laughs> Once you go down the linen rabbit hole. My glasses are kind of filthy. I gotta wash my glasses real quick and then we'll go to the iron. So, um, yeah, my I have to say my favorite linen so far that I bought, and their store's not up yet, is, by Makers, is from Makers Fabric. Other people may sell the same exact linen, but they have this four and a half ounce weight linen hardly wrinkles. It's a very nice, um, I think this might be it actually. Yeah, this is it. This is from there and it's it hardly wrinkles. It's dense, but not too heavy. It dr has great drape. I've made a dress from it. Um, I love it. This is a little bit more like a very classic linen look. Look at that texture. It's really good. 
Whereas this is a little bit more of a plain weave. There's definitely that linen texture, but you can tell the yarns they use to weave this are smaller than the yarns they use to weave this. Hence, it's a little heavier. All right, let's go to the, um, let's go to the iron weave board and I'll show you what I got cooking over here. All right, let me see if I can see chat. Yeah, okay. Let me get rid of my shawl. All right, so hopefully you can see okay. So what, you can even see my score marks. I didn't think you'd be able to see them. So, all right, so when I, oh, oh let me show you this too. Okay, so after the stream was done and I cut out my linen, what I did down here at the where I wanted to finish sewing this tuck, so remember these are release tucks, right? They go to here and they stop. Hey, Julie. Rams, the chemical extruded fiber linen is natural. For yeah, <laughs> that's true. You're right, Mullen. I was just thinking like what, what I've always been told about rayon is that when you, when you crease it, you're breaking the fiber. You know, I, I just want you all to know my fingernails are terrible because I, like a silly goose, picked up one of the olives, the millions of olives in the yard because for some reason, all of the birds are suddenly super into eating the olives in your yard. And we're just, they taste terrible. Like, by the way, they taste terrible off the tree. You have to like brine them in order to make an olive edible. But I thought, hmm, maybe now that they've been sitting here aging on the ground, they taste good. And my husband was like, don't do it. And it was a mistake, but it dyed my fingernail when I did it. So anyway, that's why it looks gross. <laughs> um, all right, so this is where I wanna finish sewing my tuck and it's gonna release down here, right? So what I did is I took my screw punch, which is like a little drill. You could use an awl or anything really pokey. And I made a little hole. I don't know, if can you see the light maybe coming through the hole? So there's a hole at the bottom of each of these tucks, okay? So then I folded the paper up along those holes, see them? And I actually had this all facing me. And then I poked, so I had this lay, this isn't the same pattern piece, but, um, or like, this is a front, this is the back, but then I poked my pins in straight down through both layers. Make sure you go straight down. You don't wanna do it at an angle. And then uh, I, let me move this out of the way. I pinned above it, pin, pinning the two layers together so they wouldn't shift. And then I peeled up one layer Right, so I could see all my pins poking out right here. Oh, wait, no, I, I folded them both up. I folded them both up, poked my pins in the other way, and then I peel apart the two layers, and then you have all these pins sticking straight down, and then I secured them. But I am here to tell you, I don't think you should do all that. And, and at the top, I just like nipped into the fabric. See that? So, ginger and, oh, so they make dyed stuff. I have just blocked that site from my <laughs> memory. All right, so this is what I think you should do if you're feeling like um, this wouldn't be too adventurous because trust me, math, math is our friend, right? So instead, find out where your first tuck folds. So here's the middle of my first tuck, right? You can see it's a wider spot, right? So this is where we would fold. You would line up these two clips, right? And the same, same down here, there was a pin here. It just fell out. Some of these pins are falling out and that's okay. So the first one would be right here, right? So now find out what that is, that fold from your center, right? Now, when you do that, like I get this nice and straight, this edge, right? Let's get this edge nice and straight. And then I measure down where that fold hits and it's like three inches in. And instead of doing any pinning, you don't even have to do these if you don't want, I'm gonna take my um, Hera marker, which is just a sharp piece of plastic, that's all this is. And I draw a line or with this. And this all this does is score the fabric. You can see that's just a dent. The linen's great for this. And then from there on out, I want eight, tucks, I just do them three quarters of an inch apart. Whatever your spacing was, so the distance between your two tucks and the width of your tuck. So you need one spacing plus one tuck and you're gonna do your next fold line and you're gonna do parallel lines, that amount, all the way across. Just forget about where all these pins and clips are. We're gonna trust our math 
math doesn't lie to us. It's not very kind to us sometimes, but it doesn't lie to us. So now I have all these little score lines, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold along each score line. And you could do it on the, uh, the wrong side so that the score line is actually poking out if you wanna have more forethought than I did. Fold it on that line. Be very particular about it. I give it a little tug. You wanna make sure you're cutting these kinds of things right on grain. And we're only gonna iron right along this little edge here. All right. Oh, and actually, uh, you wanna start away from you. Sorry, 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 start away from you. Start at the farthest one away from you. Cause then you won't be in danger of ironing anything you've already set. All right, so we're gonna fold along this score. And start ironing. I'm just kind of making sure, because I scored on the right side rather than the wrong side, the dent doesn't really want to fold there sometimes. So, and I give it a little tug because it is cut on grain and it should straighten it out a little bit just to make sure I'm getting a nice straight mark. Oh yeah, sorry, Regina. It's called a Hera, H-E-R-A marker by Clover. I'm sure there's other things, like other people have mentioned other things like this. Yeah. Sorry, chat. my chat's a little far away from me right now, like the, the monitor. All right, and so now we have our next one right here. And now, you, like to double check your work, once you get this little fold on this little indent, again, do yours on the wrong side. Learn from me. I already did my other front and my back, so you, you we won't we only have to do this um, eight times total, and we already did one. So, so look at that. So we make sure that this is a parallel line. You could get your ruler out or whatever, but I would just you know be methodical and only iron the fold that you're ironing. Don't touch the other. And now I just pick it up, kind of slide it back, and do the next one. When I started doing this yesterday, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I was gonna do this on camera. It would have bored the heck out of you guys. And by the like third or fourth tuck, I figured out that this is how I needed to do it. Cause I was doing it with all the pins and clips and oh my gosh, what a mess. It was so hard to stay accurate. So from here, I just pull it, I just slide it over like that. Expose my next score like this. And like I said, the linen is super receptive to something like a hair marker, but it has so far worked on everything I put it on because what's nice about it is that it's not, um, you know, an actual mark. And I know that sometimes you guys can't see it, but I can. And then I just don't worry about like, what if I don't want that mark there? What if it doesn't come out? But it's great on dark fabrics too. Like say you only have uh, darker marking um, utensils. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem, Amy. You know what who popped into my head was I used to see posts from this gal that I found through the Sew so Over 50 community. And her account name uh, is Jane and the Pin Tux. And of course, because of that name, that's exactly why I followed them. And um, I've, uh, I, she popped in my head. I was like, oh, I should really try and find her on Instagram and see if she gives tips on how she does all of her tucks and stuff. Because I, I literally, I, I do not do this very often. So there's, there could be other methods out there but this one feels good to me. Like I feel really confident with this. No pins. I, I don't need any of those clips or anything. I did, I did leave still that raw edge of fabric up there because I haven't figured out what that neckline shape will be until it's sewn. This one's a little fussier because it's next to one I've already pressed. It's in between these two. Oh, 
Let's see if my last one kind of lines up pretty good. And it does, that's okay. All right, so now I can see, I don't know if you can see my pinholes still in there, but if you can't, that's okay. Just measure up on your pattern up from the raw edge to where all those pins were. Uh, a nice straight line where you want them to end if you're doing release tucks. If you're going all the way through the hem, you would have ironed that all the way through the hem. And so I'm going to, it's got a bit of a curve, so I'm just gonna kind of gently pull it around like that. And I'm just gonna do just the end there. And this is where my tucks are gonna end. Just like that. All right, and this is how to look. It's like this. Let's give us a little press just because we're gonna be obsessive about our linen today. <laughs> There's like this big old hole right here. I don't know what that is. All right, now we can sew. I'm gonna put this little box of pins out of the way. Okay. I just made a really big way whack order. All centered around that little um, <laughs> drawstring puller. And someone was like, how are you gonna put elastic on that? Cause I got it to put elastic in casings. Just cause I'm, I'm like, you know what? I've been using a safety pin to do this for like 35 years and it's a pain in the butt. And everyone's like, yeah, you just need to get the such and such uh, drawstring threader. And they don't have that on Waywack, but they have something similar. And then someone was like, yeah, but how are you gonna do a last two inch elastic? And I started looking at it again. I was like, this is not what I want. This is not what I want. And so I found elastic polars on there. So I got that. Yeah, the, the ruler box they use is comical and so wasteful. But I also got a roll of dot paper. I couldn't find, I wish they had oak tag or manila paper. I couldn't find any manila paper on a roll on Amazon at all. And, um, cause I need that too. And then I also got a roll or a bolt of um, the Trico interfacing, like a whole bolt of it. And a couple of other funny little things. But I love that I, I couldn't place this Waywack order for like a long time because that little that little, um, what is wrong with my glasses right here? These are brand new and there's just something, is that a, what is that? Oh gosh, thank goodness, they're brand new. So I'm like, please don't be, I thought it was a dent. <laughs> um, that little doohickey that pulls the elastic through your waistband casing is only $2. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna order it, I had to wait. <laughs> Yeah, it's unavailable, yeah, exactly, I'm not surprised. They probably didn't like all the people using Prime shipping on it. I don't even have Prime anymore, I just don't do that because it's actually cheaper. I hate to break it to be, do you? It's cheaper a lot to just order things and then they offer me free shipping anyway. I don't need Prime. So you, chip, you pay more for Prime items is what I've discovered. I mean, it's great if you're a Twitch user and you want like a free sub somewhere. All right, so ready to sew. And uh, we're just gonna be really mindful of our width. And uh, let's just look at, I think I lost my little ruler here, but I just wanna see, what do I think a quarter inch is, <laughs> you know? So if I were to put my needle right on that, okay, that is like perfect. Okay, so I just need to keep my fold lined up to this little quarter inch mark here. I'm gonna zoom it in rather than um, pull it down. Yeah, I need one zipper to do the wardrobe by me uh, bomber jacket that I'm doing next month. If you guys are interested in that, I know for a lot of us, um, we're heading into spring, summer. But some of us are heading into winter. I'm using a size 14, Heidi. I don't have many, I have size 12 needles, but I usually use a 16 for everything and this is a 14. All right, let's do this. So now we're just gonna 
So I'm just gonna keep my fold right here on this quarter inch mark of my throat plate. Yeah, no problem. I'm looking right here, not there, I'm looking right here. This is my mountain biking analogy. I kind of want to, I kind of want a shorter stitch length. I'm going to do a slightly shorter stitch length. So this is now a, a tuck live stream, just so you know. <laughs> Tell me a story. <laughs> There's that little fold right there. There we go. And now we're going to do the next one. I wonder if this is the same thing. We should start here and go this way. Let's try it this way on this one and we'll try it the other way on the other. Uh, I think putting the back stitch up there is probably not gonna serve me very well because I'm gonna trim off that neckline. I'm gonna have to replace all those back tacks. So I could put one like down here again. I'm just not sure where it's gonna be. I feel like I've gotta pull this tuck out of the way. I'm worried I'm gonna sew on it. I think the one I'm most worried about is my back because that's the one I sort of figured out this method. I'm gonna try, um, I kinda wanna try it midway. Yeah, see I think that this would be better if you're keeping your sewn tucks to the left of your needle. You don't have to worry about any of this getting caught under there because this, this little bumps under there are kind of uh, troublesome. So there's my next tip. Sew your tucks. So, although it is pushing my, that one's not very straight. That one's feeling a little funky. Don't listen to me quite yet. Uh, my tucks are a quarter inch wide. That's what I'm doing. I can't, I keep getting pushed away though. Like right there, I got pushed away again. Why am I getting pushed away? Like right here, it got a little too narrow. And that will be a problem later on when we go to fold it. I'm gonna take it out. I don't wanna have a back stitch right there, but I think that's, having a back stitch here is better than an uneven width tuck. So if your tucks are half inch deep, you're gonna do a half inch seam allowance. You know what I mean? So it just depends. <laughs> Can I see this? No. Did I worry my thread was it gonna match? Yeah. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. This is my lesson to make sure I um, don't let this happen again, because I don't want to do this a lot. Brand new glasses, and I feel like they're worse than my old ones. You know? Boy. Can I just pull? No, I can't. Of course I can't. There we go, I got it, okay, cool. All right, let's take out this little section here. Come on. So maybe I, it's a little easier to sew accurately I, would, I don't feel like the tuck is in the way. That's what's weird. I don't know why it's pushing my... But maybe it is. Sorry, I was trying to get it lined up. I'm gonna hold it a little firmer, front, front and back. It still wants to do it. You know what it could be is a, a grain line issue. Like it's grabbing the grain line. What's this little mark on my linen? I'm gonna try another one. Hey, Ann, how's it going? It's a tuck sewing stream, so you're not late for anything. 
I'm holding pretty firm right now. I'm just keeping that fold next to the quarter inch, but see, it's still pushing it away. I feel like that's a grain line thing. It probably grabs the most prominent uh, thread of the weaving. And my presser foot is just grabbing onto it. But look at that, no, we don't need any pins, we don't need any clips. Just these folds are enough. The place I used to send my binding to was a, a pleater. So you could send fabric to them to be pleated. They did all kinds of things. Those kinds of contractors are so cool. I just saw someone, I think it was Lady Grift post, who, who, her name's Gabby. I think she just posted uh, that she took advantage of someone maybe where, near where she works that does that. And she sent out some fabric and had it pleated. And now she's kind of like working on it. Nice, Beth. I feel like it's a kind of one of those universal things. We all love the look of these garments. It is a little bit, uh, do you feel like, do you see how my machine's being sluggish right there? But why? Getting that effect though, where we think they're a little close together, but they are hitting that seam line right on it. So I think if you really want to make sure that your tucks are going to nestle together and not lay on one on top of the other, you might want to do like, like a needle width shallower tuck. So specific, I know, but that's because my tucks are so small. They're not pin tucks either. <laughs> By the way, if you like pin tucks, they, a lot of home sewing machines make a pin tuck foot and it does it for you. Did I run out of thread? Oh yeah, I did. I knew it. I was like, that sounds like I'm out of thread. Maybe that's what was going on on that stitcher on the previous one. I knew I was going to. I think this is also the reason why you don't see a lot of pin or tucks at all on um, home sewing patterns is because they're just so much work to draft multi-size and you'll see like, a, oh sorry, a small section of tucks like on a bodice or something like that or on a sleeve or something like that. And it's, it's really hard. If you're doing a multi-size pattern and you're marking tucks like this, especially release tucks where there's an end point mid garment, having to mark all the different sizes It'd just be a mess. <laughs> Do I think it's too much? Too much as in like, oh, uh, what, what do you mean by too much? Yeah, I've definitely seen people use twin needles as for pin tucks. I haven't tried that yet though. My, I can't use a twin needle on this machine. I didn't sew first, did I? Yeah, sorry, I gotta, I, got, I always have a messy first. Um, did I sew first? I didn't, right? Yeah. It's actually pretty acceptable, okay. Okay, we're almost, that's our last one on this, on the front. Oh no, next one's the last one. And then we only have 24 more to go. <laughs> yeah, more tightly woven fabrics. Yeah, something that's like not too loosey goosey. I agree. But we want it on linen. Maybe. Oh, uh, too much meaning thread on the... You know, I feel like that could... Um, just depend on what fabric you're using, you know? I would just try it out and see what you think. If you like it, go for it. All right, there's one. 
That doesn't seem like as many as we, we planned. Like, remember how much bigger the pattern was? It's not as much as my other shirt. I have, um, can you see my, well, I have, I have it right here. There's 10, dang it. Why didn't we think of that yesterday? That we that I was uh, I was emulating that shirt, but then I used the tux from another pattern that I'd already made. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Elena. The excitement, <laughs> excitement for what? Oh yeah, that would be nice, Heidi. I've done that. I did that on um, a folkwear pattern. I think it was the cheesemaker's smock. No. Yeah. It was either cheesemaker smock or the poet blouse. This is this is one of my um, regrets is because I made this really beautiful Liberty of London in this amazing Liberty of London print. Um, and um, I am just a real dingbat when it comes to being sentimental. And it, I felt like, I think I was going through a phase where I felt like I was being self-conscious about wearing some of the things I wore. This was a beautiful top though. Like I would give anything to have it back. If someone's kept it, I donated it. I donated it and I had friends that messaged me and said, I just saw your like, your, your blouse here. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, doing the tucks on the Liberty was like a dream. It was amazing. Perfect fabric for that, that tonalon. My only good thing is that the photograph of when I, um, dang it, I started the wrong way again. We want to start, we're going to start from this end. Um, the photograph where I won this award and the photograph of me for that award, I'm wearing that blouse. <laughs> so I, I at least have that. <laughs> There just wasn't a lot of photographs back then, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I agree, Karen. <laughs> That's true. I, I don't like it when it's going to give me a... No, this is not what I want. I want... This is how I want to go. Okay. We're figuring this out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We want our untucked to be under our tuck to be on top. But we, we did specifically designed this top so that the peplum effect is lower on the front and higher in the back. Oh, I, I know, Shem, right? Yeah, you just don't know what can happen sometimes. This feels, this doesn't feel right either. Why does this feel, oh, okay, that's funny. Okay, there we go, that feels better. I had this like extra fold there. Linen just wants to fold. Okay, where's my end? Oh, there it is, I see it, I see it. My little crease right here at the bottom. Okay, pulled over to another one, 22 to go. <laughs> Do you want that countdown? <laughs> No pins and no lining up of things this makes this so much faster though. Think if I had to line up the cut edge at the top and pins at the bottom every single time. No, I'm sorry. It's just too fiddly for me. I'm having trouble seeing that bottom ironed stopping point. I feel like my tucks could be a little narrower. But if I do that now, it'll be obvious I changed. And I think this is like what I think Malin or Terry brought up yesterday. Like, oh, what about the thickness of the fabric? Come on, come on, stop doing that. 
So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the millimeter <laughs> every time. And uh, that's why I say math is, you know, our, is uh, it doesn't lie, but it's not our friend sometimes, you know. Like these two right here are way too close together. This is the one I'm worried about, you guys, this back. Look at that. I'm not too happy with that. Oh, I'm not too happy with that. I don't think I can let that go. <sighs> hmm. What do I think about that? What do I wanna do? This one right here is wider because it's the center. But these right here, they look a little narrower than three quarters of an inch. I don't have my ruler. The turn of cloth, exactly. No, they're exactly three quarters of an inch. Hmm. Oh no. Look at, see how much further away that is than those? Well, this right here, this section in particular was my first set that I marked. And then I changed my mind because I was like, this is not going to stay, this is not going to stay accurate. And then I decided to do the ironing thing and I did, I redid these. But I feel like they still have some inherited marking from the previous way. Okay, I, this is my th what I think. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue from this side this way. This right here looks really narrow to me. It's, it's a tiny bit. I'm going to go that way and then when I get here, if these look okay, I'll just rip those out and I'll do it from the back. I know. I, well, and that's the other thing is like, do I just recut it? Hmm. I just have to get my seam ripper. I like using my seam ripper. It helps me think. I know it's not a very popular tool, but it helps me think. I sometimes get so lost in seam ripping, I forget I'm live streaming. We're going to take a risk here and we're going to we're going to seam rip this in a naughty way. finish it and then decide. It is on my back, so I won't see it. <laughs> yeah, these are just really narrow. Most likely going to rip it and we'll have to cut it again. But I can't see the stitches well enough to uh, uh, rip them out individually. Yeah, right, Anna? Exactly. I like that. It's like a, it's like a meet and greet. <laughs> Maybe I just need to do these two, but I feel like if these two are off, it's hard to fit them in anywhere else. You can see how narrow they are from on the back. I can at least. I'm kind of pulling up. So hopefully it's just the threads touching my blade. All right, that wasn't too bad, right? Okay. So. All right, I'm gonna take one more out and that's it. That's my plan. One more. Yeah, I like that, Shem, the three foot rule. I'm a big fan of the five second rule, so I would be a fan of the three foot rule. Three feet's a little close though. I don't really want people three feet. <laughs> I 
We'll just hum the chicken dance. Sorry if that gets stuck in your head. Ooh, that was a good one. Lifting it up is work really working really good. Let me jinx myself here. All right. All right, so. I think now maybe we can rectify the spacing just here. I should just get my eraser. I think that would work better. This thing's getting, it's like, it's like broken now. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh no, don't you dare do that baby shark junk. I'm gonna ban that in chat. All right, let's look at it. Okay, so look at our spacing right here. It looks a little narrow to that. So I think uh, one way to correct this kind of cheating would be to do a narrower tuck right here to kind of get it caught up to being okay right here. So this one right here, if I do a slightly narrower Thing. Oh, it's it's called a seam fix. It works pretty good. Uh, it's a seam ripper. But this thing right here um, is why I got it because it just kind of grabs the threads. I don't use it all the time. And look, I've used I've had it for a while, so it could be a little bit aged. I think an eraser would work, like the white Statler erasers that I use. I think that could work too. All right, so we're gonna do a slightly, slightly narrower tuck. And you know, one way to look at this is that I want the seam line from the left hand tuck to be a half inch away from my quarter inch mark on the throat plate, right? So if we look at it that way, that helps. I'm gonna do a slightly, Right, let's see if that works. That works pretty good. Okay, let's keep going. So right now I'm still sewing a parallel line. I'm not like gonna wave around a bit, but I have the line of my tuck. It's lined up with the edge of my presser foot instead of the throat plate. That's not too bad. I can live with that. Okay, now this one also looks a little bit um, too narrow. Let's get rid of some of these. I'll work on some of these threads later, but I don't wanna immortalize all of them, you know? So let's get rid of some more. I didn't do it on the front either. Okay. This is on the back. Yeah, exactly, Anna, exactly. I think anything will work. It was at the check stand at my store, you know. Oops. So if you stand there long enough. Oof, it is very narrow through here. Where's the end? Right there, okay. Let's see. 
I don't know, you guys. It is nestling better, but you can tell it's narrower. I think I'm gonna do the foot, three foot rule. I'm also gonna start doing these just a tad narrower, just overall. I'm pulling pretty firmly too down here, like pulling on the length here while I sew. Just to keep it nice and straight. I cannot see my little fold line. There it is, okay. Every time I'm like, there it is, okay. <laughs> right, Anna? <laughs> exactly. You wait in line too long. It ends up costing. We shouldn't have to pay to wait in line. <laughs> they should be paying us to wait in line. I'm keep checking because I just want to make sure all right, this is acceptable to me. I like that. They're homemade, you know? No, it's not. You, you can see the, the texture of it. It's pretty open weave. It's not as open weave as that, that blue fabric I was using. Right, exactly, Terry, I agree. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one more and then we go to the will be at the center back. You have to remember that these are made on machines that just sew them. There's not really a um, person hand sewing it like this, not hand, but you know what I mean? Like sewing each one, it goes through a machine that, that does this and they probably do just cut around it, so. You gotta be nice to yourself. Come on, see how it gets hung up? It's hung up on the layer underneath. There we go. Get my whole tuck. I'm really pulling this under layer like this, but keeping it folded, then I pull this one so that nothing gets hung up under there. Getting it started though is a little trickier because I'm a little sloppy about it. All right, so this is my one half. And then now we're gonna do this half. And they'll be pressed away from each other right here at this point. That was so hard to find when I was doing my markings. I could not see it. It was like really hard to see. Put a little pin, like a different colored pin, what your where your center back is if you're doing that same thing where you're, you know, folding um, tucks away from themselves. Oh, I have to warn you guys. My daughter might show up to say goodbye. Cause she's leaving today. close right here. I'm a little worried about this tuck width. Oh no. This is the center, right? Yeah, look at that. This one's too wide. This one's too narrow. Me too, Julie, and I need some, man, badly. I have one white top and one white tank top and this one that I'm copying. 
They get worn with everything. At least the other two I made, but the um, I wear the one I didn't make a lot. Has anyone made the, is anyone making the Kosecha pants by So Liberated? They're on my make to make list. I really like the back view with the, the elastic back view pair because I like how, how, kind of how like, like kind of crop, cropped and slouchy they are. But I'm also realizing that wearing my cropped pants, because I love them so, I love the pants so much, but then they're cropped, they're not very useful for me. So I'm a little torn. I'll be making those on the live stream too. Probably, maybe next month. I, I need, ugh. I need to figure out the fabric though. I did buy some red denim to make them in, but I wanna find something else. So, and I'm making the uh, bomber jacket next month. So if you're going into uh, cooler weather, that might be for you. Two more, 10 more. If I did this again, <clears throat> and I will, I'm gonna make my spacing between my tucks a little bigger. That way you get more bang for your buck with your tucks, like you can cover more surface area with your tucks without sewing as many, right? You agree back up? What do you mean? <laughs> back up, please. Um, I would probably add more though, a couple more on each side. So I had more, like if you're gonna go to the effort too, you might as well just do it, right? Oh, stop doing the slowest molasses thing. And I don't think I would do like a full eighth of an inch between them. I do like a half of an eighth, you know, 16th. Yeah, right, Blue Magilla? I I know, right? Yeah, it's just so classic. It's down here. Did I just get that off a little bit? Yeah, I got that a little off at the end. That's it. Let's, um. So, oh, you know, have you guys ever seen the thing? Um, oh yeah, back up, <laughs> exactly. Um. Yeah, there's a lot going on in those pants, Heidi. That's why I want to make them though. So have you ever seen when someone does this where they, they will sew their tucks down like this and then, and then this way? So they will flip their tucks. They push them down this way, so straight across, right? So you can see it's pushing them that way. And then down here, they would do the opposite. They would push them this way. And it gives this really cool effect. Anyway. I'm gonna iron these even though I uh, probably should wait <laughs> to do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull pretty hard too, I think. Oh, and let me move my um, screen so I can see chat. Look at it on camera though, it actually looks like a tuck top. That's a good tug. There's my center. <laughs> they're definitely not, they're definitely not even. <laughs> that one next to the center is gonna be a problem. Look at that one. Okay, I need to do it from the right side now. <laughs> it's 
that really that bad? Look at that thing. The, this is the one I cor corrected over here. It's a little wiggly because of the linen. I can probably correct that. Okay. I, I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with this one right here. We'll, we'll change this one right here. Not bad though. And then you can see my, my little release tucks are releasing. This is this was a unconsciously a smart decision for me because of my hip tilt putting this higher. Okay. So I just need to take this one out and redo it. These are, oh, they're eh, right here. Look at this one too. Gosh, these are pretty good. This one right here is obviously a little further spaced. These over here are a little bit messy. This one right here, I need to fix this right here. And this one, this whole tuck right here. Okay. Oh, you did, Lynn? That's really cool. Undulating, that's a great word for that. Oh, really? That marks out the next fold? Oh, that's neat, Hannah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Lynn, I could do that. Uh, this one right here, that's pretty bad. That'll bug me every time I um, wear it. This right here and this one right here. So we're just gonna take this out like, can you guys bear with me for that? <laughs> here to, we'll just do it to here, all right? And then this one. I'll just, I'll just fix this one from here up, okay? We can handle that. <laughs> The front will be a lot smoother. We've already done a front. Ooh, I cut the fabric right there. Good thing it's in that area that's gonna get cut. Yeah, thanks for letting me fix this now. Uh, I, my other tuck top, I didn't really have to iron except for the hem and that one weird tuck at the back. Uh, this one, I have a feeling I'll have to iron it. I think it's just because uh, it seems fixable, Terry. A couple of those I'm like, oh, is that even worth monkeying around with? Like they are not perfect, you know, but um, I think that this looks doable. So that's why I'm gonna try. And see if we can fix it. I'm a little scared now to do my little ripping thing, <laughs> but there we go, okay. So there, all right, we got that one. And then we're just gonna take this out between these two pins. Just a little bit. Just having another meet and greet with my, my garment. It's this one, right? We gotta get it started. The linen is more of a natural white, whereas the thread is a dyed white. It's been bleached, I can tell. Yeah, right here, okay. New cashmere pattern coming out Saturday. Guess who did the video? <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> and I was like, isn't there something happening on April 1st? Besides April Fool's Day? It took me a bit to figure it out. 
Then I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I think you guys will like it. Oh, it is, it is tough, Terry. It is tough. I, I could do my little rip method, but you know, I'm being a little bit nervous because we're on the home stretch. Exactly, Shen. Okay. Just a little bit more. Almost poked myself with that pin. <laughs> Great on my white fabric. All right, so let's see here. What we want is, we want the middle, we really want the fold to be like right here, I think. Like this thing right here. That, where the sew line was. Maybe. You know, partly, it's gonna be hard to kind of change it off grain. Oh, I know what I could do. I could fold this in half and stack the seam lines on top of one another. That's what I'll do. And then that way I know I'll get down the middle. You know what I mean? If I flip this up like this. That kind of works. Yeah, that's so true, Terry. If I'm sewing for someone else and they're usual, it depends like who you're sewing for. Some people are really, are really tuned into little mistakes, right? They're like, and I think it's the people that are a little nervous to wear homemade things. You know, they're the ones that are like, I don't want anyone to know that this is homemade. Right. But, um, most people are like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see anything wrong with that, you know? Like my brother, he is like the best recipient for homemade things. My only complaint is I'll see, it, my, he wears something I'm, I've made for him every time I see him. And even when I, he doesn't know he's gonna see me. So I know he's wearing those things, right? But he also never washes them. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you can give that thing a break. <laughs> He's like, I just don't want to be without of it. Without it, I'm like, okay. All right, so. All right, so I fold. I put this pleat on top of the other pleat for the best I could, and I'm re-sewing this. It, it is in a different spot, so that gives me hope. And we need to sync up with our other line here. Okay. Okay, that's that's better down there. And now this one here, same thing. We're going to fold this so that those two tucks are on top of each other best we can. It's not easy. Like that. I feel like, yeah, see, I'm using math again. Help me out. Look at that, how much that's off. I'm immortalizing some threads too, just to save us some time. Okay. You know what I haven't seen in a bit? And I was thinking about them the other day. It was Ray. She, she might be watching. Hi, Ray. You don't have to comment. <laughs> I feel like I just sewed that in the exact same spot. I kind of did. Dang it. That didn't, that, that one didn't work. Hmm. Maybe it's this one here. It's, it's a combination. You can see it flaring though. Yeah, like I, I don't want to keep, I'm not keeping tabs on you guys. Like I know, I know I've been in plenty of stream communities where eventually it's not that you don't like the streamer anymore. You're just like in a different place. 
You know, like you're just interested in other stuff and other people or whatever. And so that's why I never really like say, where have you been? <laughs> yeah, me too, Shem, exactly. Maybe she's really busy planting her garden. Or sewing. She doesn't need us anymore. <laughs> I have to fix this one because otherwise I would just wait to fix some of these off camera because this one's caught in the neckline. So I have to get this end correct here. This time let's get rid of some of these threads. All right, this time Okay, we're gonna put those two tucks run on top of the other. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. That's what I did. There's the new fold, like that. Now, is it that this one's just too small? Maybe I need to take a, no, I need to do that. Hmm. I'm trying to get these tucks right on top of each other so that I know I'm putting this in the middle. That's, that's still folded in the same place. What's going on with this one? Let's get rid of all this thread here. I'm liking dealing with this, or working with this linen, not dealing, but working, I'm dealing with my own sewing right now. Yeah, I think so too, Elena. Makes you mad? This is our quality time with the seam ripper. You wouldn't want your seam ripper to get lonely. Our little buddy, you know? Yeah, that doesn't look quite right. What does this need? Does this need a narrower? Like that, that's what we want. We want that. Okay. We want that, right? Like that. I'm going to iron it in place. No leaving makes you mad. I don't say leave it. I say. You know, you got to spend that quality time with the seam ripper occasionally. You wouldn't want your, your seam ripper to be lonely. <laughs> Just teasing you, Julie. Sometimes it makes me really mad too. I think this one's a little narrow right here and that's partly the problem with this one. And that I can I let go as long as they're a little bit more parallel, you know? Something like that. I can handle that. I think I can. A little wiggly. This is the tuck we're kind of trying to sew right here. Okay, that, that helped. That actually helped. All right. Ray! No pressure, Ray. We know you have always a lot going on. Nice to see you. Thanks for choosing to even spend time with us with all your stuff going on. All right. I have a lot of little threads to go back and cut on this. Okay, I think that did it though. I think it's just funky right there, just in general. All right. I will, I, I admit, like, the linen is 
it's very receptive to pressing. It, it's also a little harder to tame. Like in some ways it's easier, in some ways it's harder. You know what I mean? Yeah, no worries, Ray. I, Ray, I struggle with that too. The photo thing, oh my gosh. I, I finally, you know what I do sometimes is when I look at professional photos or like a commercial, I look at it with new eyes now. I look at, I, I try and place where they took that photo. And then I'm like, that's just like their, their mom's bedroom <laughs> or I mean, living room, their mom's living room. Like I can tell that's such a parent's living room or something and, and like in an ad or something. Right. And it's like, it, it really brings it down to like, oh, I don't need to worry about all that. Really. I just need to worry about if is it well lit and the details are there that I want to convey. The, the other stuff doesn't matter. This tuck really bugs me, you guys. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the other front though. And it does take practice and like sometimes I will look at a, um, like I'll take a photo, do it really quick, post it, cause I'm just like, whatever. I, I do not post on social media to grow my social media. I've said this before, like I know um, it looks probably to a lot of people that are new to my channel especially, that I might be working for the pattern company, right? Because, you know, people will get mad at a tutorial not being a certain way. And I'm like, yeah, well, I can sew this however I want, you know? And they're looking at it like, I wanted it to be this specific way and, um, you know, I want to see more of this or less of that. And I'm like, well, you know, if you need that, you should ask the pattern company, right? But they don't realize that I'm, I'm not that person. And so when I post pictures of me wearing the garment, it's really so people who were in the stream can see the, effort, the, the result of the effort, right? I don't take the best pictures. I do not spend hours on it. I don't even do it immediately. Sometimes I just do it immediately to get it done with here in my shop, which is like meh, you know? And then um, that's it. Half the time, I don't even tag the pattern company. I, I honestly just feel a little bit more disheartened because most of them never like the photo. And I know that they can't, they can't like every photo out there. So it's my choice that I don't have to tag them. You know, I might, I will say who it's by or something, but I also don't think like, they don't need to be tagged. Like, you know who they are, you know? So I just do whatever I want in that moment. There's specific companies I hardly ever tag just because I'm like over it. <laughs> so yeah, I think you just do what you want, Ray. It gets easier and easier. You have bad pictures. They do not have to be professional pictures. It is just documentation. Yeah, it's just, you know. I even had a comment today that they were like, in the video, they were just like, you know, I just really wanna see this on you. And it's like, it's a live stream. I don't have to change my clothes for you during a live stream, right, you know? So, but I do post the pictures and the pictures are posted on my website. You know, just do what you can. Or a little video, that's always nice. Or don't, don't post at all. <laughs> you know, like you don't have to. Like I've sewn so many things off camera and I don't even post them on social media. Because, wait, is this, is yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not doing two rights, am I, or two lefts? Where have my eyes open? Don't look angry. <laughs> you know, I remember comments made about poses and then I'm really self-conscious. Like my mom said something one day, she goes, well, you gotta look up every time in the photo. And I'm like, I never do that. That's so funny because, and now I'm really self-conscious if I even try and look up a little bit in a photo. You know, I usually look down. <laughs> I 
And you know, another thing, Ray, is like sometimes when you notice, like what I do sometimes is if I have to take a picture of something. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome, Mullen. I love to hear that. Um, if I um, have to post a picture of something, um, I will sometimes just walk around looking in my camera for the lighting. And or sometimes if I'm even my pajamas, I'm like, oh, I wonder if this spot right here is a good spot for photos this time of day. And I'll go and look. I just look, stand, I don't take a picture. I just look and see. And then I get kind of used to like, oh, this time of day I have to be here and this time of day I have to be there. I don't have anywhere to prop my phone up at home. So that's why everything you see is taken on my front deck. I wish there was more foliage, but that's only when Cricket's in town. But she'll like walk out in the yard and do it. Oh, Julie, you do not. I know it. I am self-conscious of my age. I, I started being self-conscious that I had white hair because I didn't really notice that happening. And then people were commenting on it. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? Not negative things, but it made me a little self-conscious. Um, I've gotten a lot bigger in the last two years size-wise, <laughs> not in popularity. <laughs> and that makes me really self-conscious. And then all of a sudden I'm just like, whatever, this is real life. I mean, this is what happens and this is what's happening to me. And I don't know, you don't like it, whatever, but. Okay, how are these coming out? I'm not really, I'm being really precise when I'm sewing, but they don't look like they're reflecting that. <laughs> Let's just do a big back to sit there. Oh, that's awesome, Blue. You know, um, I don't know if you're just not into doing any kind of social media because, man, mad respect there. Um, I only have Instagram because I kind of feel like I have to. But I do have a free community you can join and all these people are in there and they're, they're awesome. Um, and it is super, super low key. It's private, you know, so there's no ads, no one's selling you anything. I do sell paid groups in there. I'm not gonna like try and hide that, but I don't push them. Um, and I help people all the time. Does I don't ever look to see, are you in a group? I'll only answer your question. No, I talk to everybody in there. And you can post things. There's group free groups to join too. So if you're like into a certain genre of sewing, like um, there's a quilting group, there's a lingerie group, um, capsule wardrobe group, coat making. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a really nice platform. It's really pretty. And it's all the people that pay for groups that pay for it. So thank them, <laughs> you know? I feel so precise right now, but um, I don't know. All right, let's, let's press everything and then let's sew a top. <laughs> Oops, what do I want? There we go. Yeah, I used to have Patreon and I just wasn't very good at utilizing Patreon for the way I should have. And I, since leaving it, I realized like, you know, I could have just done a better job of figuring out how to deal with it. Um, but I just felt like I wasn't giving enough there. And so that's why I started the guild. I wanted a space that was ad free and all that. I also want to include everybody. So if people can't they don't have the time to be in a paid group or they don't have the money. They can still be a part of like a really great group of people who are sewing and are like them. And um, I like this, this uh, platform, it's really nice. Okay, oh, it's so innocent right now. And then we're just, we're about to find out how good did I do? <laughs> oh, thanks Simone. And welcome. Yay, time to put the top together. These are the tucks we care about right here, right? Right across the front. 
I'm pulling hard, people. <laughs> what do we think? I think that's acceptable. I can handle that, All right? And then here's our back, and then here's our other front. All right. So let's, um, good tug. This iron is really hot and heavy. It's awesome. Oh, wouldn't that be funny if someone named an iron the hot and heavy? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that sooner? <laughs> <laughs> today, I just saw the so over 50 post today. What happened to this one? This one looks funkorama. This is so wide and so narrow right here. Oof. Um, I think it's today's post. I'm not sure. It's about mending, but someone's into the puns and they were kind of cracking me up because <laughs> they were, they were so subtle that I was like, what's happening here? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, they're, these are puns. <laughs> okay. Time to put the level top together. All right, so we also need to do our neckline, which we should have done at the iron. All right, so we're gonna take our cutting mat, we're gonna take our rotary knife, and we're gonna finish out this shape at the top neck here. This one looks pretty self-explanatory, right? I'm gonna get my sloper out. I think that'll be the easiest way to do this. Whoops, and it's on the floor. All right. So. Oh, this is the front. I'm like, that doesn't match, okay. <laughs> Oh, but we have the, okay, we're just gonna use it kind of as a guide because we have a neck band, so this is actually kind of far away there. So we're just gonna use it kind of as a little guide there. Okay, and we're gonna be really gentle with this because we need back stitches to be put, put back there. So we're just gonna Kind of leave that like that. And then this is what I use to make the pattern, right? So that's why I went, I'm referring back to it. Could probably use the, this one I'm not sure I even need. I'm just gonna go straight across there. And again, be gentle. Look how nice that looks though. And here's one more. This one looks like slightly different angle. <laughs> we do want some symmetry here. Okay, I feel like that, yeah, that's not quite right. Let's see, I'm gonna pull this one down too. They could be a little asymmetrical from cutting, handling, stuff like that. There we go, okay. Just leave this mess till we come back here. Hey Aisha, how's it going? Oh wait, I can give him a pitch. <laughs> the hot and heavy. <laughs> yeah, Nancy's been here. Not today. Maybe she's been lurking, but. Okay, so let's, um, I could just sti stitch across these too to uh, make sure they don't fall apart. I'm gonna do that. I have a quarter inch seam allowance on these. I'm gonna do this a couple times here. 
just going to back stitch over them too. Okay. Do I think that's sufficient though? Maybe. I think you should take the time and back stitch it all. You know? Ooh. Okay. Thought I came out came undone. All right. It's looking real now. <laughs> All right, so let's do our, um, we could do our shoulders and our button placket. Our button placket actually, we should do that first. And we need to go back to the iron again, sorry. So we have a one and a quarter inch turn back. I can tell this is cut off grain too. Where's my, um, here it is. One and a quarter. Let me get my little hair marker. It's been working okay on my ironing board, but sometimes I put my cutting mat underneath so that it's a little easier. Like that. Just going to iron it back. With linen, I'm going to pre-iron things. This is cut really off grain at the very bottom. Like there's a flare there. It's probably going to be a little tricky to handle right here. Like it's, it's on grain until here, <laughs> you know, kind of weird. Let's see. Let's see. Once I do the button placket, I'll do the shoulders. We could do the side seams. Well, no, we'll do the shoulders and then we would do the neck. Um, I'm just trying to find a good stopping point so we have something to sew on Saturday. Look at how this is a little wiggly here. A little wiggly because of that grain line issue right there. I can tell. We have to force it a little bit. It's going to be a pain gonna be a pain. Are we surprised? No, we're not. I can't see chat. Sorry, I forgot to turn the computer. I'll be back in just a second though. I'm so nervous I'm gonna use the rotary knife for some reason. Okay. This one's on grain. Thankfully. I'm kind of excited for that new um, thing I added, the quick fit. I got really excited about it, added it all, and then I forgot. And then um, I had a little panic attack the other day. I was like, not real one, but I was like, wait, when did I say I was going to do that? <laughs> and then I realized, no, 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 you have time. It's not till April, but I think that's going to be fun. So I'm going to do this Friday thing where we're going to, we're just going to talk about fit. We're going to like fit something every Friday, not every Friday, once a Friday, a month. I can't talk right now. <laughs> And that's in the apprentice group. So I feel like that's a good deal. And we can uh, discuss all kinds of things. Don't I have scissors over here? Scissors, scissors, scissors. No? Okay, fine. Okay, now we're ready to do the button band. Oh yeah, how's the new car, Aisha? She was so excited. <laughs> 
Okay, Put this uh, button band on, looking a little wiggly. So let's see if we can kind of straighten it out a little bit. So I'm gonna pull a little bit, pull the fabric to kind of straighten up the line there. Like that. Yeah, how's your new car? We remember you were getting one, remember? Oh, nice. I love how she's all, my car. <laughs> Shem and I are like, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Ugh. Nice, congratulations. This one's so much better. Cutting on grain really helps, imagine. What happened here though? <laughs> what happened here though? Did I iron it a little bit off? Hmm. Huh. I think maybe I need a little more. So I just started re-watching The Last of Us, and now I can see why people stopped after the first episode who don't like scary stuff. Cause they they do they kind of introduce. Oh, I don't really like that. That looks kind of bad right there. They introduce the kind of the, the element of that show, and then you don't really see a whole lot of it. For the for most of the show, you know. So, but I could see because I'm like, oh yeah, they they really portrayed these as really creepy, and they and they are, but you know. <laughs> I see all my little back tack threads here are still here. All right, let's look at this button placket though. If I iron this, see this little curve right there. I was trying to fix something there and I think I overcorrected. There's a lot of seam ripping in this project, isn't there? I want to say it's because of like partly because of like my cutting and also because linen is, it's just kind of a beast sometimes. Oh yeah, I love that show too, Terry. You haven't watched the last episode? <laughs> it's so good. And it's shorter. Yeah, it's not really a, a horror game or show, you know, it, there is this element that has made the, the world bad though. <laughs> okay, Ray, hang in there with whatever, all the stuff you have to do and good luck in <laughs> getting it done. All right, this is one of those little tricky things. This is, this is really one of my least favorite things to have to fix when it gets weird like this. I mean, it is a, it is a post 
world traumatic event in the world is basically not the same as it was. A, a, um, a virus. The funny thing is that that, that game came out in 2013. Would, oh, interfacing. How did I not remember to do interfacing? Yeah, it would have helped. <laughs> Good point. I don't really think it needs it because of the linen is pretty stiff, but yeah, that would have helped actually a lot. But it was funny when the um, like the the panini started happening. I was like, this is so crazy that this is kind of echoing elements of this game that really most of the world doesn't know about. <laughs> but it doesn't really like it's not the same type of thing. So, all right, let's just try and correct this. I'm just trying to retrain. This little area here. This was the good side cut on the grain too. I just think right here is the problem, right here. Just unpick a few stitch, a few more stitches here. rolling it in my finger to retrain this little edge here. There we go. There, that looks a little better. There we go. Okay, <laughs> that'll do. Oh, really? I'm sorry I missed that, Malin. I wasn't trying to ignore you. <laughs> no, that, that, I don't know why I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind. Like literally, Oh, it was Terry that asked. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I get them confused all the time. Plus, they're both mods. I mean, it's, that's it. I think because they're moderators, they're both in blue. Next time, I'll have to pick my moderator so they have different starting letters. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Terry was forced to be a moderator. <laughs> Okay, that looks better. Okay, so now um, let's do our shoulders and then we'll call it there so we have stuff to sew on. Um... Oh! Wait. Why, why did I do it this way? I just sewed this inside out. It's fine, but I just sewed this on the right side. Right? Yeah. Hi, Nathby. How's it going? Welcome. <laughs> yeah, look at that. I put the button placket on the right side. Sorry, I am a professional, if you were wondering. I would not be surprised if you're wondering. Yeah, I actually like the way that looks too. It crossed my mind, so maybe I just did it subconsciously, but I really don't think I, I was thinking that much. All right, so let's not get confused with the French seams here um, because yeah, we don't wanna get confused on that. Okay, so let's put this wrong sides together. Wrong sides together. I only have a half inch seam allowance, but we'll make it work. Okay. 
It looks intentional. I agree. We'll say, we'll say it's intentional. Sometimes I've seen um, you know, garments that have tucks and the closure will sort of make them look off center. You know what I mean? It's the first one. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Aisha. Exactly. I think about this a lot. I feel like, cause even though I say it a lot, like, cause people are really hard. We all are, are hard on ourselves for like not doing something perfectly the first time or nice enough that we love or whatever. Right. And, um, it's, you're literally trying to do something you've never done before and come out with the, the result you wanted without making a bunch. Right. And I know I say that all the time, but it's just, it just is really important to, to stress that, you know, because sometimes I will feel a bad about a stream. I'll be like, you know, that just was so clunky. It didn't go very well. I don't want anyone to feel discouraged about doing this garment or sewing or whatever. Right. And I know, and I'm not really talking about like when they're sewing drama, cause I know how much we all like that for like the opportunities to explore solutions or how to fix it or what to do if something goes wrong. Right. That's, that's great. But it, but I sometimes think like, I, I don't really want to convey, like, it's always going to be a struggle. Right. And then I have to remind myself, Sammy, you're doing this, <laughs> you're sewing that garment for the first time ever too. And, and I've done this for so long and I have sewn so many things like I don't even know. And um, the fact that I will forget that it's not going to, it doesn't go exactly the way I want the first time. And it, you can probably tell when I love something so much and it's partly because usually it's because I'm either surprised by that garment coming out in a way that I didn't expect that I love. And I think like a really good example of that is the Azores dress by Itch to Stitch. Like I first saw that, I love her patterns, but usually when she launches a pattern, I'm like, no, that's just not my style. Like it's, it's a very particular style. And I know I dress pretty kind of simply, but hers are definitely geared for like a professional audience or wants things very, I don't want to say conservative, but just in general, just very simple and, and very practical. And I, and I love that too. You know, I would say that about cashmere too. Love how practical, useful, simple the garments are. Right. Um, but the Azores dress had some elements that I wanted to sew. So there's sometimes I have to sew something because I see the pattern, like the Merriam trousers, which I'm wearing today. Like I had to make those. I saw that they looked kind of hard and I wanted to do that because I like trying things like that. Right. So when the Azores dress when I was finished, I the only thing I think I did to modify that was I sewed it a little differently and I made a short sleeve, which it didn't come with. And I made it in a solid color. And I love that dress so much. I just love it, right? So I was kind of surprised. I was like, I love this. I didn't think I was gonna like this. I just wanted to sew it. You know, so there's those moments, right? You see when I'm genuinely thrilled, right? Cause I'm surprised too. <laughs> and then there's other times where I'm like, oh my gosh, this actually, I actually really like these. This turned out really good, you know? And there's other times where I'm like, okay, this is what I'll do next time. Which is most of the things I sew, you know? So. Yeah, exactly, Aisha. They literally make 20 to 50. It just depends on the factory and what they're making. But, um, you know, when, when me and Rayanne would test things, we weren't, I wasn't a big operation. I, did, I didn't have like this unlimited budget to just make 20 of something and not them, them not be sellable, right? but we would still do something like that. We would do a small run and usually in a fun new fabric cause it was really fun to do, you know, and it would be, we would test it. But in, um, when I, cause I worked, I had the like total lucky pleasure to work places where we had a factory on site. We would do 10 each of every size. It's called a size run. You do a size run. And then this way you could time it very accurately because when it, when you sew the smallest size compared to the largest size, the time is gonna be different. So they do a whole size run so you can average it out so that the production cost is the same for everybody. 
um, you know, because you don't charge more for a larger garment and you don't charge less for a smaller garment because it's less fabric and more fabric, right? So, um, you know, you, and, and then it gets the whole production, you get the whole production floor involved too. Like it's a size room that goes through the whole facility and everybody gets feedback and there's meetings and blah, 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 you know? So yeah, you, you the fact that we just do one and we're like, wham, <laughs> like we need to be nicer. So this is looking good. Let me unzoom a little bit here. All right, let's see how the tucks are looking on the dress form. Let's see, we gotta forget this one, right? Oops, let's not ruin it though. Can you please let go of my blouse, please? Okay, it just fell, something just fell. Well, all right. We'd rather chat, right? Exactly. Okay, this is gonna have a little neck band. So it's gonna be a little bit away from the neck. Oh, it feels bigger. It feels a lot bigger. But it's probably the linen too. Ooh. Okay, so we did a lower tuck release in front. Just trying to put down the side seams there. Let me just pin it closed. We need the full effect, kind of. Anytime you're trying something on a dress form, you don't wanna pin it to the dress form unless it won't stay on the dress form. You want to pin it to itself to give it the true nature, right? But I don't have the side seams done. I am bigger than this dress form now too. Let's try and overlap it a little bit. But I kind of love the way the tucks are higher in back so far, look. I think it, it takes down that um, parade float look, like it gets rid of the parade float look a little bit because it, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Why does it look so big though out here? It does look longer in back. Let's see if I have it in the right place. We have a one inch neck band going around the top. See, it's not, it's not, um, what the heck is a parade float? Is, are you, is that not a, a universal term? <laughs> I feel sometimes like when certain things sit at an angle, like they're sticking out, or it looks like I'm wearing like a, um, a, like a bed skirt or something, you know? Like there's just something about when it hangs away from my body. I call it a parade float, which is like those, you know, in a parade, <laughs> the decorated, um, do you really know what a parade float is? Is this an American thing? Is this an American thing? Cause let's look at, let's look at parade floats. <laughs> You gotta remember, I'm from, um, I'm from Southern California, so we have the Rose Parade. <laughs> it's a big deal. I've been in parades. Okay, wait, Julie. You have parade, you're in the UK, right? You have parades there, right? What do you call them? Oh, you only have it for military. <laughs> Other people have asked this. What is the British term for parade? 
<laughs> okay. Um, okay, we, we need parade float. Okay, um, are you ready? Let's see. I haven't checked my, um, I haven't checked my microphone. Is my microphone working here? All right, so parade float. So I feel like, I don't know why I just say parade float. It's not like I'm giving you a good idea, but these are these big decorated vehicles that, that inch down the street very slowly and you know, you don't see what's moving it. So they look like they're floating along the road. <laughs> the Rose Parade, that this is definitely a, um, you, the ones that are covered in flowers and natural material, those are all Rose Parade. They're, they're really famous. My mom grew up in Pasadena. So, um, so yeah. <laughs> that's where that's from but yeah so the parade float I feel like when I'm wearing a dress like say the dress stops like right here at my bust and then just sticks straight out and it's just like this really big I'm taking up a lot of space I feel like one of these parade floats walking around <laughs> you can't feel my feet see my feet moving I think that's why they're called floats because they do, they look like, um, oh, carnival wagon. I've never heard that term, but that actually very visual. I get that, I get that. Um, pray for the skirt sticks out in front, back of the trail underneath the float. Yeah. Yeah, they look like you can't even tell they're on something motorized. So like if you're in a small town like here, if they had a parade, you'd have like, everybody in the pickup trucks and everyone was sitting in the back of the pickup truck with hay bales and maybe they would decorate the sides of their truck, right? It's very obvious, but in these really sophisticated situations with the parade, it looks like it's just barely moving down the street, so. Tenting, yeah, tenting. <clears throat> yeah, it's not like, I don't know. Oh, really? What I type and what I talk? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna type a um, circle right, or I mean a, a, something in chat right now. Let's see how long. Because I um, put it down to low latency, it shouldn't be too bad. Like I see it immediately. Anyway, all right, so Saturday, we will be finishing this up. Pull her forward here a little bit. It really is looking like my blouse though. I'm excited. I'm gonna try it on later too. I like this idea. I'm glad you guys were like, you know, telling, giving me your opinions about the tux. I love the tire in back and lower in front. That decreases the parade float thing <laughs> for me. Oh, it did really, Mullen, oh. That's funny, I have it down on low latency. Oh, oh. Is, does anyone have closed captions on and can you see them? I would like to know that. Can you please tell me that? Because when I have low latency on, I'm wondering if they still show up. Yeah, I think it's gonna be great. It looks really big through here though, doesn't it? Not back here though. Look at, I love where this sits because of the hip tilt. If this were lower, it wouldn't be good. It is a, a lot longer too. I'm excited. You cannot turn on. They're not on. Okay. Thank you for telling me that. Are they usually available to you when I'm live for those of you who use them? Because um, I will go put it back to normal latency if you guys would like the captions during the stream because they used to show up for me. They don't right now. They used to be. Yeah, I think I'll go back to normal. Yeah, and you know what? I don't really notice my funky tux either. So I think I'll just let it go. Let it go. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for telling me that. 
Okay, as I've been experiencing with the latency, latency just means the time, the distance between like when I say something and you hear it. And um, the less time between those two things is nice because then you are reacting verbally to exactly where I'm at too, or close. When it's further apart, it gets a little harder because that, you know, like earlier I was like, wait, what are you asking about? Get, stay back, <laughs> you know? So yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Little neck band, which I already, um, and remember I'm bigger than my dress form, so it looks kind of swingy on here. I'm so glad I didn't put the seam right here. I was going to do that. Okay, cool. You don't think so, Aisha? Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna to check to see if the one, recent ones, they are, the closed captions are op available then for re-watching, so. All right, well, I'll see you guys Saturday. I'm gonna, next week, I don't stream. Um, I'll see you this Saturday, but next week I don't usually stream, but I'm going to stream the setup of those binding attachments that I got for the cover stitch. So um, be on the lookout. If you're interested in that, just be on the lookout for that. Um, I'll probably say so on Instagram. Um, I'll try and give you guys a heads up. It'll most likely be Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So just because Saturday I have workshops, so I can't do it on then. So it'll probably be Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So, all right. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for coming. That went really good. A lot smoother than the drafting. <laughs> drafting was fine. It was just so much more involved, and I, and I wasn't – I was kind of in – in the, do I teach this or do I just do it mode? And I kept going back and forth, so it wasn't very smooth for me. So I'll see you Saturday. You, you wanna see the attachment? Cool, all right, Anne, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I, I really wanna do it, but I have something really big, which I'm, I'm gonna be able to share with you guys soon. I have to sort some of, the, some of it out tomorrow because they're asking for some stuff. So we're, we'll figure that out. So I'll see you Saturday, bye.